Hello everybody, Jamie here from FM Scout. In today's video, I'm bringing you something regarding injuries. Now, there's not really been anything on the channel regarding injuries for a long, long time. So I thought I'd just update it for anyone who is wondering about their injuries on the game. And we're going to be talking about two topics. So the first topic is going to be understanding injuries on Football Manager. And the second one is going to be keeping injuries under control. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button. Please, please, please make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. But without further ado, let's get right into it. I know we all get very frustrated with injuries and we think it's unrealistic at times, but Sports Interactive have always insisted that injuries are perfectly realistic in the game. There are certain factors that can affect injuries for your players and there are certain things you can do to try and keep injuries under control by being proactive and understanding what is causing them. That's the main thing. So, how many injuries should you expect over a season? The best way to find this is go to your medical centre, go to your injury history, and when you're on this screen, look at injuries so far this season and look at the expected total. So, my medical team believe I'm expected around 69 injuries throughout this season. I believe this is dynamic as well. So I believe this is based on the stats or the hidden attribute of injury proneness because if I load another save from the exact date on a different team, you'll see. And you can see Manchester City, despite having currently three injuries, they're expected a total of 64, which is less than Manchester United. So I believe this kind of, this stat right here must base it off the injury proneness of the players that you currently have. But we'll come on to that, how to find an injury prone player a little bit later. So just because it's an expected total, it doesn't mean you're going to get 69 injuries. It is important to know that it is only an expected average. Clubs will certainly fall out of this on occasion as they do in reality. On average, there are 0.6 to 0.75 injuries per team per match. The proportion of these that will enforce a substitution varies depending on the injury type. All major injuries require a substitution. So let's have a little look which factors now affect injuries. So these are injuries influenced by player injury susceptibility, training workload, match workload, injury history reoccurring injuries, condition and match sharpness. The medical centre will give you feedback on each player's injury risk giving you an overall risk at the end. When this becomes high or very high, you should look to address the above in order to lessen the risk, especially in players particularly susceptible to injury. The main factor contributing to a player's heightened risk will be referenced, for example, team training focus. Whilst in the short term, a heightened injury risk can be acceptable and even preferable in order for optimum training development, over the long term, it is not recommended. Some players are simply more injury prone than others. To find this, just go onto the report card. The first thing you should do once you start a save is look through every single player you have and just see if they do have this little symbol here. Now, you can't see the actual stat of this. All I can tell you, if it's really dark red like this color, this means he will get injured a lot over the season. And really, there's not much you can do about this. No matter, it could be training, it could be in-game. There's really not much you could do, and I honestly would suggest just selling the player. Don't forget, pre-season is a vital part of the season, especially when it comes to building up your player's condition and match sharpness in order to avoid an early season injury crisis. How many first-team injuries are realistic to expect at once? Now, English Premier League clubs in reality often have anywhere from 0 to 12 first-team injuries at once. Anything in the 4 to 8 range would be considered normal. So think about this when you're looking at bringing players in and sorting your team depth out. What impact do physio and sports scientists have? Now physios, his key attribute would be physiotherapy. He treats injuries that are not treated by outside specialists or the club doctor. A better physio may slightly reduce treatment time. He will also present information on injuries within the club. For example, current injuries and statistics on these. The sports scientists will need key attribute of sports science. These will reduce the likelihood of a certain injuries, slows the rate at which a players become jaded, 
provides feedback on a player's injury risk and injury susceptibility. A better sports scientist will be more accurate in his assessment. What are recurring injuries? So a recurring injury is a specific injury. You can see with Phil Jones, he has a recurring pulled hamstring. So this is something that he generally gets a lot of the time. But if you send a player to a specialist when this injury flares up, on occasion it can cure it and remove its recurring status. What are injury relapses? So a injury relapse is when a player suffers a recurrence of an injury that they have just recovered from. This can be brought about by overtraining or overplaying too soon following recovery. Players that are orange injured, i.e. in light training, have an increased risk of this occurring if selected to play in a match. Now we are going to talk about keeping injuries under control. Let's talk about firstly the three main reasons that will cause an injury to your players. First one is the injury proneness of a player which is a hidden attribute on Football Manager. Now you can find this via the report section of each and every one of your player and a good example with Manchester United is Phil Jones. Now he's got the red icon which means he is very high in terms of injury proneness. If they don't have this there's still no way of seeing the best thing to look out for really is that they don't have any cons regarding injuries. If they do have, say, a, a one injury proneness, which means they won't really get injured much, they, they will still get injuries at some point, but they won't get injured as much as Phil Jones. You don't necessarily see this in the pros. So the way to look for it is if it's not in the cons, that's a good thing. If a player does have these cons, unfortunately, there's not really any way of lowering this without cheating. And I would really consider just selling the player. The second reason is training. Now, football teams in real life dedicate numerous weeks in pre-season training. And for the first part of their regimes is focused on heavy fitness training. Once regular season kicks off, training intensity, especially fitness orientated, is decreased as teams play one to three matches every week. The way you handle pre-season training is very, very crucial. The third reason is basically just luck. You have to be really lucky. Unfortunately, it is a game like this, and you, you do just have to get a little bit of luck at times. Some seasons, you can go the whole season without an injury. The season after, you can have three injuries to the same player. So unfortunately, you do need a little bit of luck as well. So let's talk about the intensity of your training schedules. If you choose training to be more intense, the player's condition will get decreased, and this could lead to more injuries on or off the pitch. It is a simple rule, but not so simple when trying to strike a balance. Now, we've spoke about pre-season, how crucial that is. Let's go into the pre-season a little bit more. Of course, it's the key to increasing the endurance of your players for the marathon for the season ahead. It's critical in getting the players' fitness levels right before a new season and can save you from seeing several of your players getting injured when you need them the most. During the off-season, all of your players will either go on holiday or be taking part in international tournaments. This means that when they return, your players will have much lower condition and match fitness. The more physically prepared your players are, the less likely they are to receive fitness-based injuries. Example, muscle strains, pulls or tears. When pre-season starts, you want all of your players to be focused on fitness training at a very high intensity until about two weeks before the new season is about to kick off. If a player is still not ready, then you can adjust their personal training until they are ready. This way, they should be able to safely catch up with the rest of the squad in a timely manner. At the end of the season, you will also get a reminder asking how long you want pre-season to last. A longer pre-season will ensure that the player attributes will not drop as much. However, if you select a shorter pre-season, your players will be more jaded and be more likely to pick up injuries later on. You will also need your players to play pre-season friendlies to get their match fitness to a good standard. Around two fixtures per week should be good enough to improve the players' match fitness at sufficient levels. You can, of course, arrange friendlies during the regular season to help those players who need to catch up with their match fitness. We're going to talk about protecting your injury-prone players because I know I've just said... You know, I'd recommend selling them, but if you've got a player that you really, really like, and there is ways to try and protect him, the way you can do this is just generally making sure that they work less on the training ground. To protect them, you should put down the intensity of their training regime. Another thing is taking them off the pitch when they pick up a little knock. Now, you've seen on FM 
where you get the little orange icon during a game. Sometimes you can leave players through this, but if they are injury prone, the chances are they will have to be substituted with the red icon in the ends. I would recommend subbing these off as soon as possible before they pick up a more serious or lengthier injury. If they've just come back from injury, you should give them a few more days rest until they are fully match fit to play again. Playing them too soon could aggravate their injury again. Another factor you should consider when trying to protect your injury prone players would be being careful on how you set their opposition instructions, as this will determine what kind of roles they were playing against certain players. For example, if you've got your, let's say we've got Phil Jones hard tackling a striker in the Premier League, if he's injury prone, the chances are he's going to get injured. So if you if you do use downloaded tactics and you haven't really checked the opposition instructions, what your assistant does, or the player instructions that you have, be very mindful of this as well. But taking these short vital steps could really make a big difference in your season, whether it's keeping your star player injury free or a few players from the same position fit. You should always take precaution when having players who are more injury prone than others. The next thing is having adequate cover to battle through injuries. We all know it's very important in Football Manager, no matter what team you have a save with, to have enough players in your squad to cope with the long, strenuous season, especially if you are a top team and have to play 60 plus games throughout the season. A solution for this is to have at least two players in each position to rotate, especially if you have two or three games a week. Now this will allow some of your more important players to benefit from a few more days of rest as you have players who are able to play their position and still do a good job. Now it's easier said than done if you're on a small budget and you may not have enough funds to sign these extra players to cover some positions. In that case, it's highly advisable that you build up your youth system so younger players can also step in. One thing I do on my saves is I like to have versatile players who are competent at two or three positions. So it might be something to think about on your next save. Handling resting days. Resting players is very important part of the pre-match build-up. This allows your players to get a few more days of rest before games, aiding in making them fitter and better prepared for the next game. Usually players who are in need of a rest are the ones having a rest box on their profile. This is a clear indication for you that this player should be rested for the next game and failure to do so may result in injury. The best way to rest players is after matches and heavy training, as after these two events, your players will be physically shattered, making rest days the most effective option. Older players should usually be granted more rest than younger ones, as their fitness levels are lower and they fatigue quicker. If a player has suffered from an injury, but his condition is nearly 100%, his match fitness may still be quite low and therefore should be allowed rest days. Failing to do this may result in him picking up another injury which will not do the player any good after recently leaving the treatment room. So before you play some important and very physical matches, the whole team could use rest periods to get ready for a high tempo game, as they are more likely to be working harder in these matches, allowing them to rest will give them more time to prepare for the game. How to utilise staff as injury precaution and faster recovery. Now, we all know the backroom staff has become an integral part of football in real life and, of course, on the game. So the backroom staff you have supporting you also play a very big part in dealing with injuries, especially your physios and fitness coaches. When a player gets injured, you get a report from your head physio. Your head physio is key as he is the one compiling the injury reports. If your head physio is really bad, the less accurate the report will be, such as severity of the injury and the time needed for recovery, which is rather crucial. Physios also play a huge part. Once the head physio has compiled his report, he hands it over to the other physios and they try and get the players back to full fitness. The better your physios are, the quicker the injury will be healed, which in turn will make your players available as quickly as possible. Also bear in mind that having more physios means healing time will be decreased when you are dealing with multiple injuries, as it will be possible for them to spend more time caring for each individual injury. Now then, once your player is trained, he will then move over to your fitness coach, who will oversee the player's return to full fitness. The better your fitness coaches are, the less time it takes for your player to return to full fitness. However, your fitness coaches also play another important role after a game, 
they are given the task of making sure your players are fit. The fitter the players, the more unlikely they are to sustain injury in training or in a match, having a higher fitness level to start with. Important attributes that may affect the chances of getting injured. Now, we've already spoke about the injury proneness, so I don't want to go into that too much. But in addition, physical attributes play a major part in injuries, with the main one being natural fitness. In addition, physical attributes play a major part in injuries, with the main one being natural fitness. While stamina is the player's fitness in a game, natural fitness is their fitness over the course of their career, or in between matches. It is their base level of fitness. It affects how many games he is likely to be able to perform to peak physical fitness in before becoming noticeably tired and susceptible to injury. A player with a high natural fitness will recover from injuries quicker and will be less tired after a short break. Two minor factors, also physical, are balance and strength. A low balance attribute will see the players be able to fall over more and therefore may get injured, but more often as they won't be able to keep their feet in a tackle. Strength goes hand in hand with balance, as it means the player will not get knocked over as easily due to being able to stand their ground. On top of that, mental attributes can also be related to picking up injuries, mostly aggression and bravery. A more aggressive player will look to involve himself in every incident and get stuck in. Braver players will risk injury more in situations a lesser-minded player may shy away from. They will basically just go in where it hurts and lay it on the line for their team. The impact of upgrading training and youth facilities. In essence, once your facilities gets upgraded and they get better and better, your physios might be able to take care of heavier more serious injuries. Example, a broken leg, normally your play will be out for six months. With better facilities, it could go down to five months, maybe four months with special treatment, whilst also having the specialist option, but that will of course cost money. On top of that, your facilities will result in your physios and other staff being able to do better work. And that is the end to the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and hopefully I've answered a lot of questions that you might have regarding fitness. I, I've possibly missed some stuff, so, you know, this is a debate. Let me know in the comments below if you do have anything to add that could help other fellow football manager players out. But apart from that, I will see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.